Good day, everyone. I was just going to dive in on this week's agronomy moment um, with some things here on with Scott Dickey, our agronomist again, on staging corn. So Scott's going to show us how to stage corn and how that's done when you are losing some of your leaves. But before we dive into that, Scott, what are some things and why is it important to properly stage corn right now? Well, for example, this year, Wendell, uh, we've had some very cool weather, so we're seeing a lot of internode stacking. Uh, so a lot of the plants are very short considering how far along they are. Um, for example, in your plot out, uh, outside, we have some plants that are up to about 15, 16 inch, inches tall next to plants that are roughly eight inches tall that are at the same yes. growth stage at about V5. And when we have a year like this where growth is not occurring rapidly, we're still developing. And uh, in some cases, we're approaching some uh, vegetative growth stages in the fields that are approaching limits for some of the herbicides that we're using. And so, okay, so we're getting to some of those limits or we will be here shortly. Um, sometimes they're like VA up, but are there shorter ones? In there, there are some that are shorter yet. Uh, if you look at lists of products and when their maximum uh, growth stages are, some of them start at V5. But in general, we're looking at a lot of V6 to V8. Uh, type cutoffs for many of the herbicides that we use. And it's important to make sure you look at the label of the product you're going to use on your field and have a good understanding of what the growth stage is so yes. that you're not getting yourself into a bind. Unlike soybeans, corn's a little more, can be difficult, you know, like we mentioned it, when you lose some of those lower leaves, yep. whether it was to storms, heavy rain, hail, or just the natural process of the corn growing yep. and losing the bottom that's leaves. That's a great point on the hail that we've had around here is uh, when we lose all of our top growth to hail, but the plants recover, we did not lose yes. the growth stage. We just lost the material that had been developed. So when we think about what the growth stage is on these recovered plants, we have to think about where they actually should have been uh, had they not been hailed on. So if you just go out there and just count the leaves, you might have a, on a hailed field, you might have a V3 or something that's actually a V5 or, or, or even whatever, bigger, yeah. or even bigger. Or further and developed. So that's where right here, we're going to dive in to this by digging up a plant and then cutting it apart and dissecting it to find the crown yes. and going from there. Uh, some labels will have height restrictions or collar uh, stage restrictions. And okay. I always try to follow the collars um, growth staging yes. method as opposed to height for all the reasons we talked about today. Cause you could have some very short plants that are much further uh, along physiologically and so, than what we think. So then what's happening with that herbicide? Like, why is that so important? Is it something to have to do with the development of the plant or what's going we on? We have a lot of ear initiation going on starting around late V5, V6 timeframe. And uh, we don't want to do anything that could injure those ears and uh, oh, yes. some of the tassel development that's occurring in these plants so, at these early stages. So you may not even see the results of that herbicide misappropriated until like late in the year when you see ear and sure here ear. in a few weeks as the corn gets to close to tassel pollination yep. time frame, then you can see some issues. Sure, but like right now, corn can still be. Corn like won't look necessarily bad out there. It'll still look green and everything. Sure. Right? I mean, sure. it, it may not know it until later. So anyway, let, we'll dive into this. Perfect. So there's the V5 node there. So there's the first. I'm going to cut a little further in here. Got my knife sharp last night for this. Yeah, you can see it. You can see that. It's one of the trademarks of our agronomist. There's a go. sharp knife. There's the first four. Back. Back off the light just a little bit. There we go. That's about right. Then. There's the first four to there. And That's that dark. Five. Is that that dark? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. The first four. This woody is... area. That's yes. the crown. That'd be the first four nodes. Yep. And then the first inner node elongation to the V5 node. Yep. And it's also interesting to look at this. You can see each whorl of uh, each new leaf has a whorl of nodal roots associated with it. So each one of these nodes will have a whorl of nodal roots. And you should be able to see on this fifth node if we can get the so leaf sheaths off you can see where the there's actually the ear root initiates are isn't that the shucks for that first ear? no not yet oh, okay no, well yeah there it is there's an ear sheet right yeah. there mm -hmm. and so. what about the um so you peeled off that there and i know you've talked about this in the past how you peel off that leaf sheath, leaf sheath to find where how do you know that you're not grabbing a hold of the first five leaves so, when you're pulling off? Like, what are, how are you doing that? So in this case, we have a V5 plant we know because we were able to find that on some of the other plants that the plumule leaf was still attached. But in this case, you know, when you get to V5, V6, we start shredding off the lower leaves and you can right. see that here and they're being destroyed. So at that point, it's difficult to just count leaves to find your uh, accurate leaf staging. Yep. And so in this case, this would be your V5 leaf right here. Yep. And so 
what you do is you find where this leaf sheath, you come down, you peel all the older leaves off because they don't matter anymore. And this is the uppermost open leaf collar on okay, this plant. Okay, so you start at the, mo the most mature leaf collar, yep. the one that's fully developed. Yep, find the uppermost open leaf collar, which you can see right here where the leaf sheath yes. is open, where the leaf attaches. Okay. In this case, it's not open yet on the next leaf up. It's still yes. down in the leaf sheaths. But in this case, you have an open leaf sheath. So you find where this one is attached. Yep. Okay, that's what I was wondering, where you, how you know where to start. So I'm getting all the older leaves out of the way. They don't matter anymore. Yep. So here's the uppermost open leaf collar. Find where that leaf sheath is attached down here. Oops, I broke it off. This corn's getting pretty brittle. And you can see that right here, it's going to be attached right there at that node. This plant is a little nicer. So that leaf sheath that we just peeled off, yes. that uppermost open collar, was attached to this node right here. That's right. And so there's it. the first four. There's the inner node and then the five. And that's okay. where that leaf sheath is attached. So that's so a V5 that. leaf. And yes. then let's say we get onto V10 eventually and you're out there, we dig up the, the same thing. And then we yep. go up to the the most developed collar. Yep. And how? And then we come down there and we, fi so we find, this, find this woody area and that's a V, let's that's five. Let's do the first four, first and four. five, and then wherever that. And then we count up to that where that connected. Yes. That node. Yep. Okay. That's where I was always getting mixed up is where to start. Where yep. that, that first fully developed leaf what, collar. Once you know where all the first four nodes are, it's easy from that point on. Yes. If you find the uppermost open collar, find where its leaf sheath is attached to the stalk. Yes. And then count up from those four and you'd be five, six, seven. You know, I start elongating further. Yes. You go. Okay. That's cool. I, that's that was really a question I had exactly. At how this that stage, it's a little tough yet because there's still five and they're everything's small. Yep. And it's a little harder to see. You get to six and seven, it'll start getting easier and easier to uh, tell where you're at. And that little uh, that little leaf or that little ear mm -hmm. piece that was on there, it you know everything's in there, right? Like it's silk. Yep. Once you get to about a V10 plant, all the ear shoots will have been developed. Okay. By about V10. And now it's a step then, V5. Then, we're establishing what? Now we're establishing girth. Rows around. around. Five to six, probably closer to six, you start getting your number of rows around, and then ear length continues to develop until about a week and a half uh, prior to tassel. Okay. Week and a half to two weeks, your length will. You, you keep developing ovules on those little ear shoots depending yes. on conditions, and the better the conditions, the longer they'll be. You can get up to a maximum of about a thousand ovules or kernels per ear, but typically okay. we're around that four to six hundred per in, ear in the end. Up retaining. Yep. So. Okay. And is there a certain stage where it's, it goes ear length? I mean, you covered that, but I was just wondering, like, isn't there an ear, a rose around at a certain stage, and then doesn't it go length later the ear on? ear rose around, or, around, or the kernel rose around, yes. or about V5, V6, and the length continues to be established all the way up all to the about a week and a half to two weeks ahead of tassel. Oh, okay. So it wasn't actually a, a specific stage. Nope, it is it all continues. the way. Yep. The, the, uh, the conditions. The ones are further, more developed. Oh, okay. They, they just continue to develop. And then, yep. like I said, a little over half of the maximum number that you could have typically retain. Gotcha. Very good. Very interesting. All right, that's been Scott Dickey here with Bex Hybrids. Thank you. The other thing, real quick, we wanted to show you is the recovered corn from the hail simulation. If you remember a few weeks ago, we simulated a hailstorm at varying degrees of um, severity from being sheared off to shredded. And today, um, Scott has a video he's going to show us on how well that corn's recovered. And as well as also note that today at the V5 stage, we also are going to um, simulate another hailstorm when the growing points at or above the ground to see the effects of this type of a situation or storm event at this stage in the corn. This is what Scott has to say. Good morning, everyone. Today is May 26th. Uh, I wanted to do a rehash of uh, this recovery of the corn that we uh, weed eated off to simulate hail on May 6th. So we're about three weeks after the uh, simulated hail. And what I want to show is the recovery of these plants and that uh, every plant recovered, uh, no matter how significantly we cut them off. Some of them we just shredded a little, others we sheared off at the ground. Um, when you look at the size of the plants, they are slightly smaller than the ones right here that were not uh, damaged by our simulated hail. We're in kind of a low spot in this uh, field, uh, so the corn here is not growing very well. The corn uh, that we have growth stage that was uninjured is at V5. So one of the key points I want to make is that 
it. I get questions sometimes following a hail on uh, how to grow stage corn uh, following it being sheared off. And in this case, all of these plants are at the same growth stage developmentally that the plants were that were undamaged. So when we think about herbicide applications and physiological activity that's going on in the plants that were hailed off, they're at the same stage developmentally as the plants that were uninjured. But the main point today is to show that these plants that even though we sheared them off clear at the ground are recovering nicely. The ones that we did damage uh, right in this section of the plot by uh, taking the hoe handle and uh, just crushing the growing points, you can see in most cases they didn't recover. However, these four or five plants here that were damaged by the hoe handle recovered nicely. So it's interesting to see that uh, recovery of corn plants varies pretty significantly uh, depending on how heavily damaged the growing points were. So that concludes our podcast today. I think we're at episode eight. We want to give a special thanks to our guest, Scott Dickey, for his appearance again on this show and contributing to this broadcast. He's starting to be a regular guest here, and we hope to catch him more in the future. You can find additional documents and pictures of what we talked about in the show notes or by reaching out to me. We hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and give us a five-star review. This really does help us. Find us on our website or on your favorite podcast listening app. My favorites are Apple Podcast and Podbean. It sounds like Bean Pod, just turn it around. You can search for that in the Google Play Store or on iTunes, depending on your device platform. It should also be noted that all copyright content in this podcast has been acquired through special permissions and licensing from the proper artist. We just ask that you share the links to this podcast on all the broadcasting platforms that are found. Feel free to reach out anytime with questions, feedback, or any concerns you might have. This is a production of Top Ag Media. I'm your show host, Wendell Cohen. Cheers to all of you. Until next time.